There we go again. <laughs> Hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, it's yet another episode on the Live Long Digital uh, yeah, marketing uh, page. Great stuff. So my name is Prosper Tarowinga, in case this is your first encounter with me. And I basically help small businesses like yourself to market, brand, and um, uh, help you scale your business so that it becomes profitable and enjoyable. So basically, I just sit down here maybe for 10 to 15 minutes and we talk about questions that might be uh, pertinent to you know your success or things that might be bothering you in terms of your branding, your marketing, and your reaching out to your audience so that you can actually sell to them and, and make a profit and also do most of these things with less struggle. Now, the question we're tackling today is do brands or do small businesses like yourself need to be marketing differently at different stages of their life? Okay, so I might just put out an example like right here, right now. Look at my fingers right now. They're all on the same hand, but are they of the same height? I guess you answered no, right? The reason is you can't make it a one size fit all market anymore. A one size fit all market used to work when, you know, people used to speak from a TV, right? And then everybody was just listening and glued to the screen. But now it's become so personal in as much as somebody with their phone expects that if bigger companies have enough data on them to know who they are, who their daughter is, or what time they go to the bathroom. You too, as a small business person, should personalize every bit of your marketing. So how can you do that with a low budget? It's going to be not easy, um, you know, to know exactly, um, you know, what your client is doing or how they react to your content, etc., etc. That goes down to you knowing your avatar, knowing your audience, all right? It's better to actually go niche than to go wide because when you go wide, you lose people uh, in the process, all right? So the question now that is um, maybe at the top of your mind that this video is going to answer is, do brands or do small business um, need to market differently depending on their stage in the customer's awareness, all right? Or depending on their stage in their life. Now, I'll tell you something. I've worked um, in, in, in the third world and I've worked in the first world uh, markets. And I know one thing for sure, people are still the same. They want to be treated as if they're the only person. They want to be treated as if they're important, all right? So no matter who you are, no matter what, how big your brand is, no matter how um, you know you strong you think your brand is, you need to be approaching people differently. All right, and my experience also tells me that brands go through three to four distinct marketing communication phases, which I will be um, outlaying um, in in a second. So these three um, you know distinct phases are first of all awareness and appreciation of the existence of your brand. And then the second one is emotional connection. Are people emotionally connected to your brand? And third of all, are you top of mind? Because you know what? Out of sight, out of mind. So I'm gonna repeat those three distinct phases again. Awareness and appreciation, emotional connection, and then top of mind. Now, as a business person, you should also align yourself to those um, distinct um, categories that people put you as a business. People are busy. Your customers, your target audience is busy right now. They're not just waiting for you to send an ad to them. They're not just waiting for you to, to reach out to them because they probably are worried about their mortgage. They're worried about their own financial security. They're worried about their car note. That's, you know, they, they, they need to pay that. So nobody is going to look at your ads and sit back and be like, hmm, that's lovely. Oh, I like that. Nobody's going to do that. So you got to make sure you, you, you reach out to people at whatever stage they are in order for you to grab their attention. All right. So when you first introduce your brand to people or whatever marketing communications, first of all, people don't care. People don't care who you are or what you do. They care what you can do for them. So for you to 
cut through the noise in this myriad of other businesses or other me too businesses first you should focus on awareness and appreciation all right are people aware of your brand brand awareness all right so you should put out videos put out content that lead people to have an idea of the existence of your brand within their sphere and once a brand has established this awareness and appreciation it's now time for them to focus the 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 um you know all, all your marketing activities towards the emotional connection between the brand and the customers because without that emotional connection why would anyone want to buy from you why would anyone want to follow you why would anyone want to look at your content or why would anyone want to know anything about you if they're not emotionally attached to your brand and then the final phase we're going to be talking about is using marketing activities to keep you top of mind once those people have made that emotional connection. So an emotional connection could result in somebody buying from you, all right? And once they've made that purchase, how then do you keep them wanting to use that product? So a lot of people are creating apps or websites or they're creating uh, maybe a book or whatever piece of um, you know product or service that you're putting out there. How are you making people wanting to come back for more? Because out of sight out of mind, all right, so I mean that's where people get it wrong You can't just put out a one-size-fits-all um, Advert out there and hope that people are just gonna latch onto it just because it's you you got to make sure people are aware and they appreciate your work. You got to make sure that people now have an emotional connection to your product, your service or whatever you're putting out there. And third of all, you got to keep top of mind. So those are three dif different and distinct um, marketing phases that you take somebody through their buyer's journey. Nobody's just going to jump on, like I say, just because it's you or just because they're your relative or just because they know you and then just buy your stuff without an emotional attachment. Nobody's just going to jump on, um, you know, just because it's you um, or they've bought from you. If they forget you, they're on to the next thing. All right. So let's just let's just break it down a little bit so that you understand what I'm talking about. So let's talk about um the awareness phase, you know, awareness is all the stuff that you do about brand awareness, um, telling people what you do. Uh, let's use an example that is familiar to everybody else. Starbucks. Starbucks is an example. You know, when the brand was considered new and emerging, um, you know, in, in, in the United States, they focused a lot of their marketing efforts on educating the customer about the higher quality coffee, you know, the dark roast flavors and whatever coffee drinks that they have in the States that have last names. You know, the mochiat mochiatos or the, the <laughs> I can't quite remember what they say. But, you know, because the product was familiar, but it was different, they had to educate the customer on what to want. So in your marketing cont content on brand awareness, educate your customer and prime them to want your product. Because what you're going to be doing in the process is getting somebody to change their habit. Right now, your customer is buying, listening, or following somebody else who's in your niche. All right? And if you want them to change that habit, you're going to have to appear to them at least six to eight times per day. All right. Not per day specifically, but you know how McDonald's and Coca-Cola reaches out um, in an ad six to eight times. So whatever you're doing, whether it's your LinkedIn, whether it's your Facebook, your Instagram, you have all those touch points that make it easy for somebody to keep following on to your stuff. Just like Hansel and Gretel, you know, they put those little pebbles or little bread pieces so that they wouldn't forget their way home. That's what the awareness phase is. Make sure that people become aware you are now in their psyche, you are now in their periphery. They can see your brand and separate it from your competition. All right. Back to the Starbucks idea again. They had to explain why Arabica beans were sort of a higher quality than, you know, what was it? The, 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 the Robusta beans that, um, you know, were in every home in the States. And Starbucks also had to explain, you know, why the basic drinks, the latte, the cappuccino and the mocha um, were to annoying African, uh, I mean, uh, Americans. But you know what? That same strategy did not work in Australia. You know why? Because the Australian culture is a coffee drinking culture. 
So they went on to use the same marketing that they had used in the States and it did not work for them because the audience in Australia already knew what coffee was. All right. So Starbucks, Starbucks in America, they used all that PR, the, the print ads in store, the brochures and, and, and the coffee tastings in store to increase awareness and appreciation for the unique product that they were bringing onto the market. And in America, it worked. But it did not work in Australia because Australians were already educated on what coffee was. So you want to be careful and really know what your audience wants, what your audience requires and what stage in life they actually are in order for them to grasp onto your product. Are they aware? Is it new? Is it, um, is it new and shiny or is it new and improved? Where, uh, get them to be aware exactly where they fit into your product life cycle. So that's where a lot of people get it wrong. And they just throw in one ad and hope that it will last or people will just jump onto it. At the end of the day, it's grand opening, grand closing. All right. So now we go to the next part, which is the emotional connection. Once people are aware of your product, they now want to make it a part of their life. All right. The emotional connection could be when Starbucks started introducing the coffee, talking about coffee, you know, they, they started introducing the coffee. They had established themselves as something that is new and different, but they now had to make sure that that coffee was now a part of everyday life for the average American, you know? And then that's when they turn that um, marketing attention, um, you know, building an e e emotional connection to the brand. Like coffee is like is unlike any other beverage like water or, or tea. It, it connects the morning to 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 the night, you know, or you can't do it vice versa. So there's a specific time that people drink coffee, you know, when they wake up or when they want to um, connect with their friends and it connects people to people. You know, so if you now start putting your product as part of everyday life, as part of something that needs to happen, um, take for example, um, KitKat, KitKat, KitKat is a brand that really placed themselves emotionally with, um, with, um, you know, with, with people have a break, have a KitKat, you know, every time you have a break, you in automatically think, what should I be having? Oh, a Kit Kat. There's also that other Cadbury's lunch bar. Every time you, 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 you're on lunch, it's like lunch bar, something much bigger than your hunger. And they emotionally connected their product to an everyday occurrence. How can your product be a part and parcel of everybody's everyday, um, you know, activities? You know, last year I, I did the emotional uh, side of branding by making sure that my video was available every day at 2 p.m. AEST. The reason why I was doing that is because I wanted 2 p.m. to be associated with content, to be associated with my brand and everything else that comes along with it. No matter where anyone was, if they found themselves not watching my video at 2 p.m., they would think that something is wrong. So that's the emotional connection you want to do and, and, and create around your own brand. You know, going back to coffee, we, we, we begin our day with coffee. You know what I mean? And we use it, um, you know, we, we, we close our diner. I mean, we, we, we begin the day with, with, a, with a drink of coffee. And throughout the day, we discuss life and business over coffee with other people. So it's, it's, it's emotionally invested in as much as you can have a coffee drink with, um, you know, somebody else and still progress with life, you know? So I think it was in the early 19, late 1990s, Starbucks marketing in the States you know, they made that transition from educating people about the beans they were using to the emotional connection. You know, the in-store posters started showing how people can now enjoy coffee. And it's, it, 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 you know, it's, it's limited advertising also showed how coffee makers, um, you know, are making life more enjoyable for themselves. Because people don't care about your product. People care about what your product can do for them. So if your coffee is going to help them, um, you know, connect with their business partner, their wife or their daughter, then they will use your product or your services or your facilities. 
All right. So find out what people actually want deep down that your product can also provide and make that emotional connection. All right. Make that emotional connection. Have you ever seen, um, you know, alcohol companies, they have a cooler box or a beer and it's sunset and they sell romance, they sell luxury, they sell, um, um, you know, a lifestyle. Just like Rolex is not in the business of selling watches, they're in the luxury business. Find out what business you're in and then start putting out content or videos that are aligned to that. All right. And then the last bit that people get confused is once people have made that emotional connection with your business or with your service or your brand, keep top of mind because out of mind, um, out of sight, out of mind. Look at how busy people are right now. Look at how busy every single one of us is. Nobody can even sit around and watch a 10 minute video. All right. So going back to Starbucks again, at the point where everyone was now aware of the brand and everybody else was now coming to sit in and having a coffee experience, you know, the brand no longer needed to educate people, you know, about the difference or that Starbucks was giving to every other, um, you know, um, take and go uh, coffee shops. The brand did not, um, you know, always have to reinforce the emotional side of things. Instead, the brand now using now uses marketing activities to just remind people that at every corner there's a Starbucks in order to keep the brand top of mind. All right. So look at how you are putting your stuff out there. Look at how you're putting your content out there. Um, not every finger on the same hand is the same height, and this could be your clients. So if they are at a different stage or at a different awareness of your brand, you want to give them content so that they're aware of who you are and why they need to pay attention to you. After they're now aware, put them through a phase where they now become emotionally connected to your brand and then hopefully transactions happen from there. And once you've got those customers, they say it is it is even harder to get newer clients than it is to get, um, I mean, it's, it's harder to keep, to, to, to get newer clients than it is to keep an older client. So you now want to make sure that they, they, they um, are, you know, you're, you're now top of mind. And guess what that does? Guess what that does? Yeah, it increases the customer's lifetime spend with you. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, I would want you to share this video with somebody who might need to hear it at this moment. Or if you think that you've got a question that I might answer, because I'm going to be doing these videos every single morning, um, no specific time as yet, but I really want to make sure that we connect and we share all these, um, you know, um, you know, tidbits that might seem obvious, but will make a big difference and will save you a lot of money, time and effort in order for you to be do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But in the meantime, I want you to go out there and enjoy your business. Make sure that people are aware of your brand. Make sure that people are connected to that brand and make sure that you are top of mind wherever you go. In the meantime, bye for now.